Thanks to our distinguished panel, and thank you for your service to our country. Um, on Wednesday, Admiral Winfield referenced Section 333 of the FY 2011 National Defense Authorization Act during an opening statement before the full committee. Um, I offered this language with Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, and I know that this section requires him to evaluate the ASA mission in consultation with the director of the National Guard Bureau and report back to us on various components of the mission that were that we outlined. Um, I guess, General White, this would probably be for you. Can you give us any insight into what we can expect to read in that report and when we can expect this report to be made available uh, since we asked for consultation from the Guard side? Yes, sir, and uh, thank you for the question. I have been in consultation with Admiral Winnefeld. Our staffs have worked very closely together. I, my understanding is the Admiral will be ready to uh, release that report here very shortly. I can't tell you exactly when, but uh, I think, the, in summary, what, uh, what you will see, uh, without getting into the detail until it is, is announced, is that the, uh, uh, the Admiral recognizes, as the Commander of NORTHCOM, the importance of the Air Sovereignty Alert mission. Um, he recognizes the, uh, uh, the growing threat that, uh, uh, that we face uh, with um, uh, the maritime threat and some of those uh, capabilities that seem to be emerging. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, he will also take a look at uh, some of the other ways, including not just uh, Air Sovereignty Alert, but the other ways that, uh, that the Department can help with uh, ensuring the sovereign airspace of the United States of America. Uh, Congressman, as you well know, because you have one of those units in, in uh, your jurisdiction, that uh, uh, the Air National Guard performs 16 of the 18 Air Sovereignty Alert sites across the country. Uh, I would not expect that total number to change much, if at all, uh, because I think that uh, with, the, with the threat that we face, there is uh, wisdom in a geographical disbursement of our forces. Uh, we're able to respond quicker that way, uh, and it uh, I think further points out the value of the community basing that we have. The particular unit that uh, is in your jurisdiction, the 177th, uh, is one of the ASA units, as you well know, and it, it protects one of the most heavily populated areas of the, of the country. And if you look around the, uh, the country at the other locations of our uh, Air Sovereignty Alert sites, you can see that they protect not only our citizens but key infrastructure around the country uh, that may come under, under attack. Uh, so I, uh, I applaud Admiral Winnefell for uh, what he is doing with the report. Uh, I think it will be very informative uh, to, to the United States Air Force, Department of Defense, and, and Congress also. I have great confidence in the work that he is doing. Uh, he is pulling together the adjutants general uh, and the, uh, uh, our wing commanders in the Air National Guard, and I know he's working with the Army National Guard and the other reserve components too as he uh, looks, at, looks at new and innovative ways to protect our country. I hope this answers your question, sir. Um, yes, sir. I also have a follow-up and want to thank Mr. Reyes because he touched on this with the situation with the F-16, but there are additionally two areas that we specifically asked for the report to look at um, are the current ability to perform the ASA mission with respect to training equipment and basing and whether or not the ASA mission is fully resourced. Uh, could you try to give us your opinion on these two areas and offer some recommendations on how the subcommittee might be able to help you address the current and future shortfalls that you might have with specific pieces of equipment um, of your F-16 fleet? Let me uh, address the age of the fleet first because the, the answer to the question is right now uh, we're, we're okay. Uh, we have sufficient capability to perform the Air Sovereignty Alert mission. Uh, you know, there's been some di discussion about as we recapitalize the uh, United States Air Force and the Air National Guard, uh, is it necessary uh, to uh, bed down those units that perform the ASA with fifth generation fighters? And I, I would point out that of the 16 uh, Air Sovereignty Alert uh, sites that are covered primarily by our, our Block 30 F 16s, that those same units not only do the Air Sovereignty Alert mission, but they're used in the federal warfight overseas as we rotate on air expeditionary force rotations and we uh, count on those airplanes to perform our, uh, our operations overseas in the event of, uh, of war. Uh, when you think about in the future, and this goes to your, answer your question about proper equipping in the future, uh, it is apparent that uh, we will need the, the capabilities that uh, reside in the fifth generation fighter 
not necessarily the stealth aspect so much, but those parts of the uh, fifth generation uh, fighters like AESA radar, like integrated uh, communications, like fusion uh, sensor and fusion systems that uh, allow uh, the air sovereignty alert uh, birds to communicate with uh, the other sensors that we have available around the country, uh, and uh, to have the, the, the comm that we need and the um, uh, electronic warfare protection that uh, the units would need when they perform the AEF rotation uh, that they're required to do. Uh, in the last couple of years, uh, we have made great strides in rewriting the what we call the DOC statements, the, the description of capability statements for uh, each of our Air Sovereignty Alert units so that, uh, and we did this in conjunction with Air Combat Command and the United States Air Force, so that now there is a documented requirement, uh, not just for the warfight overseas and the capabilities that our jets need for that, uh, but also for the Air Sovereignty Alert mission. So when we talk about uh, the basing locations, I think you'll see that in the report that it comes out. Uh, and I think what you'll see is we, we have those pretty much right. There may be some small tweaks one way or the other. Uh, as far as the equipping, for the current time, we're okay. But I share your concern that as we uh, age those F-16s out, that if we don't modernize them with either a SLEP or replacing them with 40 and 50 uh, series uh, F-16s with those AESA, uh, fusion, sensor fusion and communication capabilities uh, that there could be a time in the future when we would not be able to adequately protect ourselves. But I have great faith that uh, through the recap program with either F-35s or with legacy flow of 40s and 50s, uh, we will be able to meet that mission in the future. There is a question on the timing and when that will happen, and those are the details that uh, I think will uh, probably be dictated by the performance or lack thereof of the F-35 acquisition program. Well, I'm, I, again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. General, thank you. Uh, uh, I hear what you're saying. Um, uh, cautiously optimistic that this timing works out, but boy, if it doesn't, uh, we're in a heap of hot water. We're in a heap of hot water. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you.